Cat and Moose podcast. I'm Cat and I'm Moose. This is a true life podcast where we explore the quirks of being human. Hey Cat. Hey Moose. Hey Sarah. Hello guys. What are you drinking over there, Cat? Well, Interestingly enough, um, based on what producer Sarah said before we hit record, I am also drinking a mimosa, um, but with pineapple juice. Aha! Twinsies. That is bizarre that you're both having that. How weird is that? Quite weird, I must say. Quite weird. Quite. I do need to clarify that at least to my knowledge, we are not swingers. No. No. Oh, dear God. What? Well, thank you. I mean, that's what pineapples stand for, right? It's what what stands for? Pineapples. pineapples. Oh, yeah. Upside down pineapples stand for that on your porch. Okay, I just made the connection. Sorry, I'm still waking up, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> it is the weekend. It is the morning. I get it. Yeah, pineapples. Um, You know, there's a, a townhouse on the way into my neighborhood that has a pineapple right next to its door. It's like a metal one on their wall, but it it's mm. intentionally in a place mm-hmm. where people can see it. And, you know, that means more you're power to them. It also means welcome. Can yeah, we I was going to say it's also it's also really well known as a symbol of hospitality. Yeah, that's right. Now, that might be a certain kind of hospitality. <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> hey, to each their own, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, yeah. I guess. Yeah, we're talking about not judging these days. So let's not judge the swingers. Hi, guys. If you're swingers, you will not be judged by Cat Moose or producer Sarah. No way. Enjoy your swinging life. Woo! <laughs> and you may call yourself a swinger and you may like to swing, um, like swing dance. So we're not just calling you out. Or swing at the playground. <laughs> I like to swing at the playground. I, I, I swung at the playground. You like to swing <laughs> at the playground? I bet you do. <laughs> I was just going to say, I swung at the playground with my therapist recently. So like, oh, that does not surprise me at all I for know. what it's worth. <laughs> I know. I know it. How's, uh, how's not having therapy going for you? <laughs> it's really <laughs> terrible. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> um, no, it's fine. I I have continued um my regular body work sessions. Um, so gotcha. I am doing that kind of therapy. I'm doing body work therapy. I'm just not doing um like traditional talk therapy right now. And it's going okay. It's going okay. It's it's um It's interesting because like, I feel weirdly empowered to work out my own shit. Well, good. And I don't know like why being in therapy before it's not that I didn't feel empowered. It's almost like I'm having an awareness that I have the ability to like work out my shit. Like there's something about pulling away from, from that modality of therapy for this season that has allowed me to to kind of go oh okay oh well, how am I going to work this out and I immediately go oh I need to go see fill in the blank and it's like actually I know how to do that like I have mm-hmm. the tools to do that thing so mm-hmm. yep. um so it's been kind of neat that's great see we're not just a therapy podcast guys we are a feel free to quit therapy when you're done also feel free to quit things you've quit also if it's healthy for you Which, have you heard of this thing called quiet quitting? Oh my gosh, I just read about it this week. Have you heard about it, Sarah? Nope. It's kind of (laughs) brilliant. Unless it's happening by your own employees. Yeah, I agree. So explain what it is, Kat. Please. Well, my understanding is, is limited because my brain does not work this way. But my understanding is that it is when an individual in a job basically does as little as possible in order to not get fired and keep the job. Right. Yeah. Wow. And it's a very subtle, quiet, I'm going to do just enough to get by. And the kids these days are calling it quiet quitting. Don't blame it on the kids. I think. Why? Because here's the thing is I also in the same, um, 
article read that there's a thing called also called quiet firing. And listen, Ooh. I could name a handful mm. of companies that I have worked for that quietly fire people. Yeah. And mm. what that means is you don't get what you ask for as far as, you know, either resources, education, or even salary. Um, and they just kind of like edge you out of meetings and you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like it's this, it, it's all like passive aggressive ways mm -hmm. to, yeah. to manage in my opinion. But the quiet quitting, I, I do think there is a place for that. I would never say this like even two years ago, probably. But if, if somebody is not, um, being attended to and yet they haven't found what's next for themselves. And by attended to, I mean like they're not getting somebody feeding into them. They're not truly getting what it is that they were promised at least in this job, mm. mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. maybe is even a stretch to say promised, but I mean, it's funny cause I'm taking this ethics class right now and it's a lot of this conversation of like, is a job just a means to an end to make your dreams come true or whatever it is, you know, it's basically a salary or is, and, or if you want, is it, um, you know, really about having personal values met as well. And I think that's an interesting mm. conversation because there are some jobs where, you know, people actually enjoy what they do. <laughs> <laughs> really? I've heard. <laughs> Word on the street. <laughs> You've seen some memes about it on TikTok. <laughs> like, I'm not saying I don't like what I do, but uh, apparently I've heard that they, people have made hobbies jobs, and I think that's fantastic. <laughs> that's absolutely amazing. And you said passive aggressive a minute ago, and it made me think of, of like what you just said, like if an employee is not getting the resources they need or they're not getting, you know, fed into in the way that they had been promised or whatever. It's like that it is a very passive aggressive way to handle things. Like what about going, dear supervisor, I am feeling like I am not fulfilled in my job right now because of X, Y, and Z. Is there something that we could do together to figure that out? Like how, why is that so hard? I don't know, but I mean, I, I definitely am aware of companies who actually have a policy and are, are, are quoted as saying, we don't fire people. And so, yeah, I don't know. It's actually bizarre to me that you wouldn't have, like, hmm. I'm, I don't want to ever waste time is the way I see things. So like, if, if I'm not yeah. a good fit for you as an employer, as part of the reason I work for myself, <laughs> <laughs> if I'm not a good fit for you, like I want to know about it. So either I can improve or I can go, this is not what I really want to be doing. If that's what's expected of mm -hmm. me, you know? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I, uh, it's, it's an interesting, it's an interesting thing. The quiet quitting and the quiet firing. Yeah. I hadn't thought of quiet firing. I've only, I only, it's like my brain just like couldn't handle anymore. It's like quiet quitting. <laughs> like I didn't think of like anything beyond that. Um, and I'm so glad that you brought up your ethics class because I have really been carrying around something really heavy since last week's podcast. Oh gosh. And you're just going to throw it out here. Lay it on us. I am. I'm going to drop it like it's hot. Like basically, <laughs> um, you mentioned something last week, Moose, that is really like substantial and monumental. And we spent almost zero time on it. You told us last week that you are in grad school. Yeah, that's true. You did. What are you doing? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough fair enough <laughs> i honestly don't know because every like i have a big summary paper i have to write today and um yeah it's hard for me to comprehend have i talked about having to use speechify in order to like <laughs> no i haven't talked about that on the podcast no mm -mm. you haven't what is mm -mm. speechify well thank god that uh, Sarah is a good friend. And I was just, I was sharing with her. I'm like, I have such a hard time comprehending. I was actually texting with one of our listeners, Tori about this around ADHD. 
Um, yeah. Like reading and comprehension. Yeah. I'm just like, I I'm, I'm recognizing there may be, there may be a little right there. You know what I'm saying? No. <laughs> like maybe, um, <laughs> maybe I have had issue. I was always a good reader. I was a great speller. So I, I don't know what that means, <laughs> but what I do know is if I read three chapters of a textbook, I have no idea what I've just read. Got like I, it's not yeah. sinking in. Like it doesn't, I can highlight. I mean, you should see, I've got 45 highlighter colors and I'm like, this feels <laughs> like a green. This feels like an orange, but none of it is ingested into my brain, my body or my spirit or soul. So, um, you know, since I read books by listening to books, I thought, well, is there a tool out there? And Sarah had told me that this is not an ad for what it's for. And then Sarah told me there's this app called Speechify. Trust me, I'm paying for it. It's not an ad. Um, but it basically is like um, a plug in to your browser. <laughs> Ooh. Um, <laughs> is that what they call it these days? <laughs> yeah, it plugs, it <laughs> snaps into your browser. It plugs right into your browser. <laughs> it fits perfectly into your browser. Um, but you can upload PDFs or whatever, whatever. So I'm basically like copying and pasting and having this, this desktop app read to me as it does. And hearing it, I'm comprehending oh. more. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's cool. Okay. I, I was wondering, like, like I couldn't tell where you were going with it. I was like, speechify kind of makes me think that you're talking and the thing is writing for mm-hmm. you for some oh. reason, but it's kind of doing something different. It's reading for you, whatever you put into mm-hmm. it. That's really yeah, it's, cool. It's speaking what is on paper. And so, um, apparently that is how I learn. If anyone is listening and you're like, that is a telltale sign of blank. I love a diagnosis. So please. <laughs> it may require a surgery though. And you said you were no, done with those. No more she surgeries. Loves the surgery. I refuse. I'm done with my surgeries. But if you, if you're like, Oh, you, you're probably ADHD or you're probably, you have a learning disability or something right in, you know, the numbers, you know, the email, um, and tell me what I am. And just in case you don't, one eight six six K A T M O O five or hello at catmoosepodcast dot com. I um as usual, and I was told by my body work therapist recently that this is actually somewhat normal human behavior, which was helpful for me to hear at the time. Um, I would like to talk about an experience that I have had that relates to the experience that you're talking about, Moose. Oh, please share. In in the past, I have viewed that as me being narcissistic and wanting to focus on myself. And my bodywork therapist was like, actually, I think it's called a conversation. (laughs) Like, she's like, I think you're being a person. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. I'm I'm down with that. Um, I read on the plane last week. I read right now we are in the season in Chinese five element theory that is called late summer. Oh, my gosh. We are on the exact same page. I am so, (laughs) this is so fun. Okay. I was like, I know where we're going, but (laughs) yay. So we're, we're in the season of late summer, um, which is pretty self-explanatory. It's late summer. And that is represented by the element of earth, the earth element in, in Chinese five element theory and the energy flows that are associated with the earth element. The yin flow is the spleen energy flow and the yang flow is the stomach energy flow. And so when I was on the plane the other day, I knew I was, um, this past weekend, I knew I was going to do like kind of a, we've started like a little bit of a book club in Jin Shin Dodum. And, um, so one of my friends and I, well, we haven't started it. She and I started it and it's just the two of us <laughs> right now. But. Hey, if you want to call that a club cat, I am totally it's fine. It's, you know what? The Bible says where three people are gathered. Oh, you need one more person. Yep. <laughs> we, we need one more person to be. A- it's two or more. You're good. Oh, then you're good. You're a club. Yeah. 
Look, guys, see, I can't be blamed for not knowing the Bible now that you know my comprehension <laughs> issues. So <laughs> I think it's where two or more gather together. You have a book club. So keep Great. going. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you're in the presence of God. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. We are a Bible verse podcast. Yeah. We're a Bible <laughs> comprehension podcast. Yes. <laughs> yes. Anyway, when I was on the plane, um, I did a very short amount of reading on the spleen and the stomach energy flows and what they're about and where they are on the body and stuff like that. And then I went to my friend's house and I took these like flashcards and each card was one point on each meridian. And so she got on her table and I held points along. <laughs> Wait. Can we explain what a table is just so people don't see her like jumping up on a kitchen table, <laughs> like on her dining room table. So she got up on her table. Okay. It's a massage table. Okay, great. Yeah. So sorry. Massage table. Um, we, we are both licensed massage therapists. You have to be licensed to be able, yay, um, to touch people in the state oh, of Tennessee. Oh. So <laughs> Uh, that's a whole other thing you got to get certified that's a whole for. other that's a whole other licensure ethical uh. podcast anyway um she got on her massage table and i sat by her table and we went point by point by point um down the energy flow of the stomach meridian and because i was holding points on her body and she was reading the card and then we would talk about each point. I now know so much hmm. about those two energy flows. And it's because I had a relational interaction hmm. with the material. Yeah. Like me reading what I read on the plane. Like I was glad I read it and I retained a couple of things. Like it's not like I retained nothing. Um, but having that like hands-on interpersonal relational with also data being shared experience like really helped me learn and so I just want to say like go you moose like whatever it takes like speechify spotify <laughs> iCloud whatever it is like you do you and you learn the way you learn and I still want to go back to like what is your goal like what's your purpose in being in grad school because oh. I, I, I don't know. I really don't know. So there's this program called Masters of Professional Studies, MPS. So like you have an LMT now after your name, which is super cool. My goal is to have as many letters as possible <laughs> by the time I die. <laughs> because I think smart is sexy. So especially yes. uh, if I am having to struggle through the learning process. I think it's even more badass. So I will have an MPS after my name in a couple of years. Um, I'm also going to have a coach. I'll have some coaching letters too. Mm -hmm. yeah. I actually, yeah. I got to tell you, this is, this is me being vulnerable. Um, let me see if it's right here. Oh yeah. I love okay. vulnerability. So I know you do because you are a sexual being. Um, <laughs> Whoa, we gotta, guys. We got to talk about that later, too. If we don't have context, it's weird. I know. I know. But weird is good. We are a weird <laughs> podcast. So I had this notebook here sitting up on my um, bookshelves. Um, and Sarah saw it one day. And it was like, basically, you know, you write yourself like little encouraging things or whatever. It was basically like some goals I had, but they were sitting up so I could continue to see them. And she looked over and she was like, oh, I am smart. I know my shit. I'm worthy. I'm desirable. I can trust myself. Kat, that's amazing. Well, my version of it is certifications that I want to <laughs> <laughs> That is amazing. So what do all those letters mean? I want to know every single damn one of those. Okay, so the first one is uh, MBI, which is the Martha Beck Institute, which is where I got my coaching training. So um, that's almost complete. And then next would be certification and the International Coaching Federation, ICF. Um, and then... I want certification in IFS, which is internal family systems. And then I'm completing my Enneagram certification. And then I have, I want a master's in professional studies. Yeah! Yeah. 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 So yeah, that's, <laughs> I got caught, but th those are my goals. <laughs> and one, 
one day I just wrote them down. I was like, I'm in a season of learning. So this yeah. is what I'm doing. <laughs> well, and I, um, uh, thanks to our friend Shimmy, I've been listening and I just started listening to this book called the four agreements. Yes. I have it on my shelf. And one of the things that is like the first agreement is to be impeccable with your word. Oh, wow. So if you say a thing, then you do a thing. Yep, exactly. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's hmm. you know, it, it's all, I mean, it's all the same. All the books of wisdom all say the same thing. Be a f- good person, you know, <laughs> but like. <laughs> Here's what that's saying. Even after COVID, if you schedule a lunch, you show up to that lunch, even if you don't want to be impeccable with your word or say no. Or (laughs) yes, even better, even better. And so, um, so one of the examples that it gave, it was like, if you, if you say something, this is kind of like law of attraction stuff, like the secret, you know, it's like, if you say something, then you manifest it into existence and you are a living, breathing, beautiful example of that that you have said these are the certifications I'm going to get these are the letters that I'm going to have after my name and can we celebrate that you are almost done with the Martha Beck thing like you are you are within just steps of the finish line yes the International Coaching Federation you're very close to being able to be certified there and then Mm. the um Red Cross CPR. <laughs> I don't remember what the, the lifeguard. <laughs> and then I want to be a flambologist. Yes, yes. Um, What's a flambolo- flambo- flambo- What's the person flambo- who gets flambo- your blood? Aren't they a flambologist? <laughs> no. <laughs> Flambotomy. Uh, Flabotomy. Flabotomy. No. Nope. Lobotomy. Lobotomy. No, nope, that's not it. It starts with an F. Somebody in their car is screaming right now. <laughs> it's probably our friend Chris. He hates when we can't find the word. Him and my mom. Well, guess what? Now we can blame it on the little tick I have. Phlebotomist. Phlebotomist. I was right. You were right. Phlebotomist. I am freaking amazing. Yes, did you I are. say phlebotomist or did I say something else? A phlebologist. Phlebologist. I'll say it now. Phlebotomist. <laughs> Fla. Fla. But there's no M. Oh, uh, yeah, there is. Fla. Bottomist. Amazing. P H L E B O T O M. Oh, it's a P H. I S T. Phlebotomy. Which is different. A, f- a phlebotomist is different than flambe, which Correct. we enjoyed a flambe last night together. That was nice. We did. I put that up on our Instagram story. We were celebrating your LMT. Yes, we were. And I was horrified at how much I have a basketball shaped head. Oh God. And it makes me think of our flesh colored basketball episode from hundreds of episodes ago. Um, thank you for that lovely celebration. It was absolutely amazing. And for lunch today, I'm having my leftovers. Yes. Delicious. Oh my gosh. You got the A5 Japanese steak. I did. And it was so good. Okay. So back to your head. Um, I have been talking to my legs. Okay. Hmm. I love that that isn't shocking to you and it's exciting. It makes me so happy. Oh my gosh. What have your legs been saying to you and what have you been saying to them? Well, okay. So, um, I have been, I apparently say things out loud that I'm thinking because I am becoming a vulnerable human and I was kind of processing this feeling about my body changing and like, you know, trying to work out and trying to eat better and all the things like I said to Sarah at one point, do you think that I am emotionally prepared to lose this weight? Mm. Hmm. And you know, she just put it back on me, which is not what good friends do. And she was like, do you think that you are emotionally prepared to do that? But I've really been thinking about this because, you know, I do think that our body holds on to things Um, Mm -hmm. trauma and weight and all kinds of stuff. Right. And Mm so, um, I really, that's a question I've been asking myself is like, not only like, am I prepared, but what came up after I was processing that a bit 
um, this morning was like the kindness I have to show to my body. Um, and I, what I did is I like found myself saying things like, I can't wait for my stomach to change. And um, I can't wait for my arms to be stronger. And so anyway, I, I just had this um, realization from talking to Sarah, like she didn't say this, but in so many words, like, I think I need to reconcile with my body. Mm. Hmm. You know, and like, that's freaking weird. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I need to be friends with my body, you know? like It's not that weird, because if you're, if you're against your body, then it's like... Right. There's just no movement. You guys are head to head, you know? and Well, and that's what is happening, is like, I keep telling it, I can't wait for it to change. And it's like, okay, what if I honor it for what it has done for me? Mm, you know what yeah. I mean? And like... Mm -hmm. So I was doing this whole thing with my legs today where I was like, you have held me up even when I have gotten bigger than I mm -hmm. want to be. And mm -hmm. it's like, when did our bodies become like our enemy? Mm. Yeah. Like, honestly, do you guys have any knowledge? Because I need some. Like, at <laughs> what point did we go like, oh, you have failed me? Which I, I don't know if that's just me. Do you guys feel that way? Mm. Oh, it's I'd, just me. <laughs> no, I don't feel it. <laughs> no, it, no, it. It's such a. Um, it's a really, really weighty. <laughs> both. <laughs> yes, <laughs> pun intended. My body is weighty. <laughs> yes, it is. Very punny of you. It, yeah. Thank you. Um, it, it's emotionally really weighty for me, and I think that that's why it took me a minute to respond. Mm -hmm. Um, because I. I feel like my body and I argue all the time. Like, I, I feel like it's like mm. we're in this like head to head, like kind of tug of war type thing. And, and yet like it continues to serve me. Like, it's like, why, why would you continue to serve me when, when all we do is fight? Like, why wouldn't you just quit, mm. you know? And then it's like, I have this like thing in my head where it's like, well, when, and if you quit, maybe we'll stop fighting. Hmm. And it's like, why, why must I feel like I need to wait for something to go wrong for me to make a change? I, I agree. And you know, there is that like bottom line thing where it's like the buck stops here. But also <laughs> I thought about you with your diabetes too. Like when you say you're constantly fighting, like in some ways you are like, yeah. you're like, here we go again. Why did this, you know? And like, you yep. know enough about how to control your numbers and stuff, but also, I mean, I'm around you enough that I recognize like, there's just times you're like, what the <clears throat> fuck is going on right here? Right. right. Yeah. It's like, I can't enjoy deep fried American sushi without taking myself on a blood glucose roller coaster. And mm. so some would say, well, how about not eating that? You might consider eating something different. And I'm like, you might consider like <laughs> this because it's like, I like, it's really good. And every now and then I want a deep fried thing. That's got salmon, mm -hmm. tuna, cream cheese, avocado, rice, seaweed, and then baked and battered and fried in tempura. Like Sounds I want delicious. to be able mm -hmm. to eat that, you know? And it's like, so yes, I'd have uh, clearly a little bit of energy around this. Thank you for bringing that up, Moose. So what do we do? <laughs> what do your legs say? What did they say back? Well, hmm. they have yet to talk back. I think they're mad Ooh. at me too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think we have a issue here, but um, I, I, there's something about the idea of being embodied that keeps coming up for me. Like, mm. um, just to keep being vulnerable. Why not? Um, I had this realization recently that when I have pain, I am afraid to touch where I have pain. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, like, so say for instance, I'm, <laughs> I'm getting old and this thumb the past two days has been locking up. Do you ever have your thumb lock up? It feels like a trigger finger. Mm -hmm. I had that with these two fingers. Yeah. So there's something inflamed in the joint. Clearly it's not a big deal, but it's this, it's this feeling of like, why am I afraid to give myself comfort when I have pain? I think I, 
Like the only thing I can come up with is maybe I'm ig- ignoring it and it's more denial, which is definitely an Enneagram eight thing is like avoiding pain and just pushing through. Um, but so there's this idea of embodiment that I, I don't know what the word means. Maybe someone can look it up, but that <laughs> keeps coming up for me is like being inside of my body. And the other layer for me that is coming up is like, if we truly believe God is in us, not outside of us, then it brings a whole new like idea around the Christian thing of like my body is a temple Mm. because that's always Mm. been used against us. I think, well, Mm. I will speak for myself. I feel like it's been, been like weaponized of like, well, your body is a temple, so you better honor it. And it's like been around anything sexual, anything food related. And a lot of it to me comes from, and I'm not saying that's not a good verse in the Bible. Hear me say that. But I think the verse has been used in a way that it's, it's felt weaponized. Mm. So to me, I'm trying to flip that and be like, okay, if God is in me and I, God is of me, if that makes sense, then why wouldn't I honor that as a temple? You know what I mean? Um, Yeah, that's mm -hmm. like, that is revolutionary, Moose. Like that Mm. is, could you say that one more time? I have no idea what I said. Something like, (laughs) um, if God is in me and like also of me, like is in my DNA and created Mm -hmm. me, so I'm part of they, them, he, her. um, You know, I, I feel like, why wouldn't I create a temple in order to honor that? Yeah. That's, I mean, that's so beautiful. I'm, I'm so inspired by you saying that. And it makes me go like, oh, it makes me have compassion for my body. Like all Mm -hmm. of a sudden this thing, this person, this being that I've been fighting with, like I all of a sudden want to like give a hug right now. Like, Mm. so I think you're onto something and yeah. And if we are God, then glorify ourselves. If like God is in us, not outside of us, then we'll, what are, why are we consuming so much? <laughs> <laughs> I mean that, like I actually wrote that down this week. Like, why is it that we must consume things? Like I'm in this space where I have like a three prong mission right now in my life to take care of my body, my money and my mental health. Okay. My body, my money, my mental health. And Across all three of those, there are consumption issues. <laughs> mm-hmm. My body, my money, and my mental health. Moose, you are you are literally dropping some serious wisdom <laughs> on the podcast today. Basically, I'm reading out of my diary. That's all it is. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you are so brilliant and so beautiful and so magical. And I <laughs> hope that every one of us listening and talking with you can think about our bodies, our money, and our mental health like that's that's really cool Sarah what do you think about the body stuff in what regard like what you were sharing or do you do you make your body your friend or your enemy or anywhere in between um I I feel like in the last few years I've become probably too attentive to my body um And so wait, why too though? Why is it too much? Maybe because I, I overthink how I'm feeling. Like if, for example, if at any given moment I can, I can probably give you a list of at least a couple things that are bothering me in that moment, you know, and I'm just so aware of whatever, like my, my ankle has been doing this thing or, you know, my neck hurts or whatever. I, obviously we all have our normal aches and pains that, that, that kind of plague us all as we get older. Um, but sometimes I can get too into it and then I'll just like try to stretch to get this thing. And then I've been stretching for 20 minutes and now I've overstretched and, you know, and, um, so that's, that's, a I don't know if it's a problem, but it's like, uh, it can become like an obsession for me in a way, Hmm. um, where I'm just trying to like roll out my back or like stretch my side enough to where, everything feels aligned. Like I'm so consumed with my spine being aligned. Um, I don't know why. (laughs) 
<laughs> I don't know why. It's very strange. So I have my own weird things. Like hearing you guys talk, it just, it, it's like, and I know that it's a mild, not mild, it's major obsession of mine right now is um, <laughs> body, mind, acupressure, like the mm-hmm. whole Jin Shindo thing. And I think all of our problems can be solved Mm. with utilizing this modality and moose like you and I talked about last night. It's like, Hey, do you want to do another session? And I was really surprised that you said yes, you know, Mm. and, and, um, and Sarah, I know that when we've worked together on stuff, like you've been like, Hey, whoa, I didn't know my body was going to tell me Mm -hmm. about that. You know, Mm -hmm. it's like, that's so cool. And, and whether, you know, it's with one another or with other practitioners or whatever. It's like, I really think like getting still and getting quiet and listening to our bodies and even having help listening to our bodies, because Mm -hmm. like if we're constantly fighting each other all the time, it's not like all of a sudden you want to sit down and have a cup of coffee with your body, Mm -hmm. you know? So it's like, it makes sense that like a practitioner or another person kind of on the journey with you could help kind of guide you into Mm -hmm. listening to your bodies. Like, um, one of the things that, that my body work therapist said to me this week, I was telling her how really, really I'm dealing with some difficult stuff at work right now. And she was like, you might consider that while things are really, really difficult at work, you might consider a little bit more self care. Yeah. Whatever that looks like for you. So hearing all three of us talk about this right now, it makes me think like, I wonder if, if as we're going through this discovery process and maybe our friends listening might consider the same thing. It's like, are you at war with your body? Like, are you battling your body? Like, and are you willing to be still whatever that looks like that Mm -hmm. might look like taking a hot bath. It doesn't mean that you have to go to a therapeutic appointment. Um, but it just makes me wonder if, if we could all take some extra time and, and, um, be curious about that this week. I love that. I, I also want to jump back. You said earlier, you know, talking about your therapy, that this is a season for you to, um, basically, you know, listen to yourself and, and you have the tools now in order to walk yourself through some of this. And I am obsessed with, um, when summer turns to fall. And so I love that you covered that the late summer thing. Hmm. And what are you making that face for? I just, I love when shit just like comes together like that. I know. Like the synchronicity of that is beautiful to me. I agree. So uh, I'm not really a pumpkin spice kind of girl when I talk about autumn, but I do love like campfires and bundling up when you have to go outside and going on hikes where you don't sweat your ass off, you know, like just being in nature is what I feel like fall feels like, whereas summer feels like. Yeah, you're outside, but you're sort of miserable unless you're in water, you know? (laughs) Um, But I looked up the meaning of autumn, like metaphorically, of kind of like what the themes are around it. And Mm. I just want to share first the kind of shit that the internet spits out. Here's the original (laughs) thing. This is why you have to really vet what you're looking up on the internet. (laughs) It starts out good, but here it is. Autumn is the third season of the year. Coming after summer and before winter. Thank you. And coinciding with the dropping of leaves from the trees as they go into a winter rest. Which is why it's called fall. (laughs) Oh, it gets better. (laughs) We also use autumn, metaphorically, to talk about the season of a person's life. And I was like, oh, cool. But then it says this. Like that luminous older actress in the autumn of her career... Wait, she's not yet playing a role in nursing homes, but neither is she scampering around in bikinis anymore. Wow. That is really, a, that's quite a stretch for me. Well, yeah, because some dumbass wrote it. Okay, so anyway, here is what, here's what fall means, guys. Here's the real goodness of it. So here are the themes for fall. And by the way, fall starts on Thursday, September 22nd. So mark your calendars. But this is what we have to look forward to. Fall means change. Uh, The only constant is change. It means mystery. Um, It says, thanks to changing nature of life, each and every day presents us with new mysteries. The crisp fall air and changing leaves personify these unknowns. It means preservation, which I love. 
and it talks about animals preparing for the winter and storing food and creating a cozy hibernation space, which I love going into winter. Mm. Uh, it means protection, which I love. It means balance, and it means letting go, which I love. And so I just wanted to share this quote um, that I've always loved. It's by Mae Sarton out of Journal of a Solitude. And she says, I think of the trees and how simply they let go. Let fall the riches of the season. How without grief, it seems, they can let go and go deep into their roots for renewal and sleep. Mm -hmm. Imitate the trees. Learn to lose in order to recover. And remember that nothing stays the same for long, not even the pain. Sit it out, let it all pass. Man, that's beautiful. Mm. That reminds me of that um, uh, painting directly across from you in your office, Moose, that says, allow it all. Yes. And I just, I see it in my mind's eye all the time and I hear it all the time. Allow it all, allow it all. Producer Sarah Reed. To find out more, go to catandmoosepodcast.com. Cat and Moose is a BP production. 